The year is 2080. You're aboard a spacecraft traveling at 30% the speed of light. You got on the ship in the year 2040 as an ambitious young astronaut. Now, a 65-year-old man, tired of this lump of metal you call home, you're finally approaching your destination. You're part of a crew sent to colonize the exoplanet Tea Garden B after scientists detected a habitable atmosphere. Upon arrival, you see great cities and giant spacecraft in orbit around this alien world. Using your spacecraft's powerful cameras, you zoom into street level and see, well, humans. Now, time for the pop quiz. Leave your answer in the comments. Is this the result of A. Time dilation B. Humans evolving independently for a second time or C. Technological advancement I'm your host, Alan, and you're watching Elder Fox. If you answered A. Time dilation, then you were close but not correct. Tea Garden B is 12 and a half light years away. Traveling at 30% the speed of light would take you 39.7 years to reach the planet. However, for the people watching back on Earth, it looks like it took you 41.6 years to get there. Time has effectively slowed down for you by almost two years over the whole journey. This is explained by Einstein's theory of general relativity. In essence, the faster you go, the slower time goes. Yet this doesn't explain why there are humans on Tea Garden B. If you answered B, humans evolving independently for a second time, this is highly unlikely. Although still unlikely, aliens having a humanoid shape is feasible, but to be exactly the same as us is impossible. Think of all the species on planet Earth. Chimpanzees are the most similar to us, sharing 99% of our DNA. Yet this tiny 1% difference produces a huge variation. Now imagine alien DNA is just 1% different to ours. The possibilities are endless. Now if you answered C, technological advancement, then you are correct. While you and the crew spent 40 years in space, big technological advancements happened back on Earth. They developed spacecraft capable of traveling at 99% the speed of light, and due to time dilation, anyone on this spacecraft would experience just a short one year and nine month travel time. To the people back on Earth, however, it looks like it took roughly 12.6 years, as common sense would suggest. They colonized the planet over the last 20 plus years. As they overtook you on their journey, a decision was made not to contact you. If you found out that your whole life was essentially wasted, the mission would be compromised with drastic consequences. However, they did not forget about you entirely. Upon landing, you are given a hero's welcome and find that multiple cities are named after you and the crew with giant monuments marking your service. This is all, of course, simply hypothetical, and with our real current technology, it would take 19,500 years to reach Tea Garden B. This is based on NASA's Parker Solar Probe, the fastest spacecraft humanity has ever launched, clocking just 0.064% the speed of light. Although this speed seems low, it would take just under a minute to get from Washington, D.C. to Tokyo, traveling at this speed. This really puts into perspective just how big the universe is. Tea Garden B is relatively nearby in cosmic terms, yet still so far away. Now let's look at what we currently know about Tea Garden B. Discovered recently in 2019, along with another planet orbiting the same star aptly named Tea Garden C, they are two of the most Earth-like planets ever found. Tea Garden B flew straight to the top of the habitable exoplanets catalog, which currently lists 19 Earth-like planets, with notable inclusions such as those from the TRAPPIST-1 system. It has an Earth Similarity Index of 0.95, which uses characteristics such as mass, radius, and the behavior of its star. Based on these characteristics, it's essentially 95% similar to Earth. It's important to state, however, that this does not mean it has a 95% chance of habitability, as the index does not take into account other important factors such as the behavior of its atmosphere. 
The atmosphere of a planet is actually the second most important factor when determining the habitability of a planet after it being in the so-called Goldilocks zone. Unfortunately, current technology makes it very difficult to determine the actual makeup of atmospheres around exoplanets. The most popular method is the transit spectroscopy method, looking at the different wavelengths of light as a planet passes in front of its star. The Tea Garden star, however, is extremely dim and about 10 times smaller than the Sun. The normal method of finding exoplanets, the transit method, where we look for changes in brightness as a planet moves in front of its star, could not be used. A different technique had to be used where we look for any changes in the radial velocity of the star caused by the small gravitational pull of any orbiting planets. The scientists determined that Tea Garden B has a 60% chance of having a temperature surface environment between 0 to 50 degrees Celsius. Again, this is based on just the Earth Similarity Index. But if this planet has an atmosphere similar to Earth's, its average temperature would be closer to 28 degrees Celsius, pretty much the perfect temperature for life as we know it. Tea Garden C, meanwhile, has an Earth similarity index of 0.68 and is expected to be around minus 47 degrees Celsius, that is, if it has an atmosphere similar to Mars. The James Webb Space Telescope, due to be launched in 2021, will be able to study the atmospheres of exoplanets and will hopefully shed some light on what is going on around Tea Garden's star. The Webb Telescope will have two methods of determining the atmospheres of exoplanets. The first is a better version of our current technique, transit spectroscopy. However, the second method, which allows Webb to take direct images of exoplanets, will work slightly better with the dimness of the Tea Garden star. Although these images will not be stunning panoramas, they can give us incredibly useful information, such as the color of the planet, any seasonal changes that take place, weather phenomenon, and even if there is any vegetation on the planet. The Webb telescope will be a huge step in the search for habitable worlds. We could be surprised by how many we find. After all, who knew there were so many Earth-sized planets nearby? We have so far found around 4,000 exoplanets, and 30 years ago, debate was still ongoing as to whether exoplanets even existed. There is just one small problem. Let's talk about the Tea Garden star, an ancient red dwarf. Most Earth-like exoplanets have been found orbiting this type of star. Red dwarfs are good for habitability, but also very, very bad at the same time. The good thing about red dwarfs is that they are mostly old, so any life orbiting them has had a long time to get going. They are much cooler than our sun, which means potentially habitable planets have to orbit much closer to be in the so-called Goldilocks zone. In fact, an orbit around the star of Tea Garden B, a year on Earth, takes just 4.9 Earth days. This is where it becomes a problem. When planets are closer to their star, a phenomenon called tidal locking becomes more probable. This means that only one side of the planet is facing the star at all times, just as we only ever see one side of the moon. If the planet is tidally locked, it would have a scorched side and a very cold side. The only place where life might evolve is between these two zones, a permanent twilight hour. However, due to the temperature differences on the planet, violent giant storms would take place in this twilight area. As red dwarfs are very old stars, life has had a long time to evolve, yet this life might want to hurry. The problem is that red dwarfs rotate more rapidly than sun-like stars, generating much more powerful magnetic fields which can produce extreme solar flares, up to 10,000 times more powerful than anything our sun does. Given that the planets are so close to the star, atmospheres can be obliterated entirely. Even if the planet retains an atmosphere, there is another problem. Multiple studies have concluded that red dwarfs don't emit enough photons of the right frequencies to support photosynthesis. Given that photosynthesis is the basis for all life as we know it, then any alien life orbiting a red dwarf would have to find another way. This might be in the form of chemosynthesis, or extracting energy from chemical activity. 
Although extremely rare, there are creatures here on Earth that produce their own energy without using photosynthesis. Known as chemoautotrophs, they can support productive ecosystems deep in the ocean where sunlight cannot reach. These organisms are mainly also termed as extremophiles, having to cope with harsh environments. While we haven't found large animals feeding on chemoautotrophs, independent of solar energy, it might not be entirely impossible. We have found notable creatures that can survive and thrive in extreme conditions. For example, the extremely acidic waters of Lake Rotokawa in New Zealand is home to a specially adapted leech. All we can do for now is use our imaginations until the Webb telescope comes online and gives us a clearer picture of Tea Garden B.